Talking about the ghetto Funky, funky, get out Trying to survive Trying to stay alive Greetings, and welcome to the Militant Negro YouTube channel. My name is JB, and I have some rather troubling news. Uh, it has come to my attention through social media that Dylan Roof may not be competent to stand trial for the massacre. And massacre is exactly what it was. I don't know, I'm kind of speechless here. Roof is charged with hate crimes, obstruction of religion, and other counts in the killings at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church. Authorities said Ruth sat with 12 people in a prayer meeting for nearly an hour before firing dozens of times, killing nine and leaving three unharmed so they could tell the world the shootings were because he hated black people. Now, according to this judge, he is incompetent or uncompetent or not competent enough to stand trial, which means he has a bit of insanity at play here. But if you spend an hour sitting and talking to the people you planned to shoot dead, how is that not competent or insane? I'm going to read from the story that I saw, okay? The federal judge presiding over the trial of Charleston church shooter Dylan Roof said last week that Roof may not be competent to stand trial, raising the prospect that this, his federal and state death penalty case may be indefinitely delayed. The judge in the death penalty trial of Dylan Roof believes it's possible the white man charged with gunning down nine Negro parishioners in Charleston last year may not be mentally competent to stand trial, according to newly unsealed court documents. A defense motion unsealed Friday mentions U.S. Judge Richard Gergel's finding that it's reasonable to believe Roof may presently be suffering from a mental disease or defect. The motion says the judge's finding doesn't alter Roof's constitutional rights. Gergel, the judge, ordered another competency exam for Roof earlier this week, one day after halting jury selection because of the defense motion. He held a hearing with only himself, Roof, and defense lawyers present to consider the defense motion. The court is mindful that this delay in jury selection may be disappointing to some but under the present circumstances, the court finds that this brief delay in jury selection to serve the ends of justice. The judge expects a report on the evaluation Monday and will hold a hearing Wednesday. Gurgle, the judge, plans to rule within days whether Ruth is competent and if so, they will begin jury selection for Ruth's trial November 21st. Much of the unsealed defense motion is redacted, meaning you can't see it. It's been blacked out. Oh, man. Including several lines preceding the reference to Gurgle's reasonable cause finding. If Roof is declared incompetent, he should be transferred to a Bureau of Prisons Hospital for further evaluation and treatment amid, I'm sorry, aimed at restoring him to competency. So that means they're going to take Dylan Roof, 
who slaughtered nine Negro parishioners in church during Bible study. They're going to take him to a mental institution to try to restore his sanity. Yeah, good luck with that. I don't, man, this is something else. Roof's attorneys want the doctor's report disclosed to them first before anybody else. Of course they do. They also want Wednesday's hearing to be closed and any disputes about the competency finding to be sealed. Now I'm going to stop right here and just make a few points. Okay. Dylan Roof cased this church. That is not a guess. That is a fact. There's no way he would know that the, uh, those people in that Bible study had a Bible study at that hour, at that time, on that day, unless he cased that joint, as they say, unless he investigated it and researched it. He did his homework about the inner workings of that church and their Bible study, and I'm also quite sure he knew who would be in attendance. Does that sound incompetent mentally to you? He spent an hour talking and worshiping and doing Bible study with these 12 people. And after his hour was up and he decided he was ready, he shot and killed nine of them, apparently, allegedly leaving three to tell the story, a.k.a. the scenes from Natural Born Killers, where those two killers left witnesses alive to tell the story. Any of this sound like an insane person to you? Any of this sound like a mentally incompetent human being? No, not to me either. Man, it is something else. I, I'm almost speechless. More of the story as I'm reading it. Gurgle's order may delay opening statements until 2017 in Ruth's murder trial. The judge plans to question the 500 prospective jurors in groups of 10 twice a day until he qualifies 70 of them for lawyers to choose from. That process is expected to take several weeks. Ruth's lawyers have said previously that he would plead guilty to the charges in federal court if prosecutors would agree not to seek the death penalty. Why they think he doesn't deserve to die for shooting nine people to death is beyond me. I mean, I'm all for lawyers and criminals being represented. It's, it's the law. It's their right. You're innocent until proven guilty. But if you want to tell me a Caucasian man can slaughter massacre, execute nine Negro people in church during Bible study, and he can get away with living in prison for the rest of his life? If you tell me that's justice, I repeat to you that it's bullshit. It's racism in action. Okay. Whew. State prosecutors also plan a death penalty trial for Ruth on nine counts of murder after the federal trial is finished. Before proceeding, I think it's necessary to explain what's going on here because I've seen several comments about social media that suggest members of the public think that this judge is suggesting that Ruth might be able to avoid trial and go free. So this continues. I'm reading this now. Nothing could be further from the truth. In the context of a criminal case, there are two points at which a defendant's mental state become an issue. The one that most people are familiar with, of course, is when someone is found not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect, or words to that effect. In some states, this has been changed to what has been called a guilty but insane verdict. In this case, that's a verdict that comes after a full trial on the merits that include psychiatric evidence presented by both sides and in which the defense argues that the defense ought to avoid guilt or punishment because he was not aware 
he was not aware that he was acting, committing a wrong. Again, Dylan Roof knew what he was doing. He knew he was there to kill Negro people because, as he stated, he didn't like Negro people. What's being suggested in Ruth's case, I'm reading again, is that he is presently suffering from a severe mental disease, that he is unable to understand what is happening to him or to assist his attorneys in the defense of either the merits of the trial against him or the eventual penalty phase of his trial, which could lead to him being put to death by either the state of South Carolina or the United States government. So what they're saying here is for anybody to be put to death, state-wise or federal-wise, you have to be competent enough to understand you are going to be put to death. And they are arguing, Dylan Roof's defense team is, that he is incompetent to understand that. Uh, again, I'm almost at a loss for words here. I mean... Here's a man, and I can't repeat this enough. Here's a man who walked into a church, a place that is supposed to be a place of sanctuary. God's house, if you believe in God and you have the faith. God's house. Dylan Roof walked into God's house during a scheduled Bible study, sat down with these 12 parishioners, and they welcomed him in, which is something Negro people do. He welcomed, he was welcomed in by these 12 parishioners. They sat down with him. They had Bible study. And at his time of deciding, his decision, he opened fire, killing, and I repeat, purposely killing nine and purposely leaving three alive to, quote unquote, tell the story. Of what he had done. Now a friend of mine on Twitter pointed out that this was an execution and that Dylan Roof knew that Clem Clementa Pickney would be there. She stressed to me that Mr. Pickney may very well have been the likely target of Mr. Roof because Mr. Roof was a known racist belonging to racist organizations. She says that maybe Mr. Roof was sent there either by his organization members, leaders, or on his own volition to assassinate Mr. Pickney. I don't have that as proof, but it sounds more plausible to me than to think that Mr. Roof just picked out this church, walked in there, slayed these nine people, left three alive to tell his tale, and that he's insane not competent to be tried for those crimes not competent to be put to death if found guilty and if he has been chosen or judged by the jury to be put to death now that all brings me to this point i'm trying to make when a caucasian man or woman decides to go in a shooting spree and take the lives of people, humans, not just Negroes or people of color, but humans, period. Whenever a Caucasian person picks up a weapon and, deci and decides to kill human beings, they are immediately classified as mentally ill. There has to be something wrong with them. They aren't th thinking straight. They they've got a mental issue. We need to put them in a hospital and try to heal them. Or study them. Now, on the other hand, whenever somebody is murdered or killed or harmed or maimed, assaulted by a person of color, especially Negroes, that individual is classified as a thug, a terrorist, a criminal, and immediately he or she has the book thrown at them for breaking the law. When in reality, if you think about it, anybody who picks up a weapon and kills anyone unprovoked has a mental issue. 
Okay, that's not specific to Caucasian people. You can't exclude all the other people in this world of all the other races and skin colors from having a mental issue for killing someone. And when somebody picks up a weapon, arms themselves, plans out an assault on multiple targets and becomes a mass shooter or a mass murderer, that person has real mental issues. That applies to everyone who does it. All races, all skin colors, all religious affiliations, they have mental issues. It does not just apply to the Caucasian mass shooters. So if somebody of color decides to kill somebody in a church or a synagogue or a temple or a, a, a Muslim place of worship, a mosque, they have a mental issue as well as this lily white Caucasian Dylan Root. Everything in justice should be equal. Equality under the law is what everybody should have. Dylan Root should not have been taken to Burger King for a snack after killing nine Negroes in church. It should not have happened, but it is reported that it did happen. He was treated with respect. And there's no other way to say it. Dylan Roof was treated with respect by law enforcement after he killed those nine parishioners in that church in South in Charleston. Okay, he did that. And he was treated that way. I know many Negroes, people of color, unarmed, shot dead in the streets. Bodies left there, just lying there. Mike Brown is one who comes to mind. Body left laying in the street, uncovered. No respect whatsoever. And he did nothing but walk down the middle of the street. And he was shot dead and left to lie there for hours. Dylan Roof is taken alive after slaughtering nine Negro parishioners in a Charleston church. And he gets respect. I, again, lost for words. First, we have Samuel Dubois murdered by Officer Ray Tenzin, and he gets a mistrial. That was last week. Now we see the same thing happening here, a setup for no justice. How many times do we have to see this before somebody in authority, somebody with some power, decides to make a change in the criminal justice system? You telling me Dylan Root is not competent enough to stand trial, let alone competent enough to get the death penalty. You telling me that is like urinating on my head and telling me you're giving me a free shower. You're telling me I'm stupid. You're insulting my intelligence is what you're doing. Not competent to stand trial. A judge is going to rule on this. Now, yeah, I know you say, well, the judge hasn't ruled yet, JB. Why are you so upset? It could be nothing. The judge could throw all this crap out that the defense has put before him. He could deny their motion. He could go ahead and start jury selection. Yeah, he could. Very well, he could. He could be a judge who actually knows the letter of the law and abides by it. And he could see that all this is just a tactic to get Dylan Roof off of murder or have him spend the rest of his life in a mental institution. This judge could peep that game. But the fact here is these nine people that Dylan Roof massacred have family members and friends who want justice. They don't want this dragging out for years. They want justice. They deserve. They deserve justice. They deserve to see Dylan Roof either in prison for the rest of his life or executed for killing nine Negro parishioners in Charleston, in church, during Bible study. They deserve justice. Will they get justice? Well, that remains to be seen because the track record of justice 
in the United Slave States of America for people of color is bad. Almost non-existent. I had to get this off my chest. I had to say it. I thank you all for listening. For stopping by. Subscribe if you like this channel. Thank you very much. Namaste. Be safe. Stay well.